Welcome everyone, it's Neil here from 3D Tutor, back today with another amazing geometry node, and this time we're looking at walls. If you like this sort of thing, be sure to give us a like and subscribe, and all of the links for this geometry node, including commercial licenses, can be found in the links down below. If you want to pick up this node and all our other nodes, as well as all of our courses, check out our Patreon, which will also have the links down below. So with all that said, let's get started. So the first thing you'll see is when you open up the geometry node is, you'll have a couple of example actual brick walls. Now let's actually bring in our own brick wall. So you can bring this in with a Bezier curve. You can bring it in with a path. So we'll bring in it in first of all with an actual path. So if I go to curve, so if I press shift A, come down to where it says path. Let's make this path a little bit bigger and let's also reset all of our transforms like so. Next of all, all we're gonna do is add in a geometry node and you can see this is working in Blender 4 and it also works in all of the previous versions of Blender from Blender 3 onwards. So now let's click the little down arrow, click our wall, and here we go. Now it might not look like much to start with, but this is what you'll actually get. And now we can actually mess around with all of these things on the right hand side. We've made this so simple, guys, as easy as possible to use. So you'll be able to use it in all of the projects that you've got. Now you will notice when you first bring it in that they look very different from these bricks. And this is in case you actually want a more stylized or mobile game type look. Now this geometry node does come with its own material that we've set up. You can see it's randomized on the color, but you can easily swap in and out your own materials where it says material here for the cement and where it says material for the actual bricks. So the first thing we'll actually look at is the layers. If we start turning this up then, it will make our wall a little bit bigger. And the other thing before we actually click on these is, if I press tab, I can actually come in, press shift space bar, and I'm still able to move this around as you can see. And what's more, I'm also able, if I press E, to expand this wall as large or as small as I actually want it. Okay, so now I've showed that, let's press tab and let's actually go into the geometry node. So the first thing you'll see is the layer gap. This actually controls how much gap you've got between all of your bricks. And you will notice as well that we've also put some cement in there just in case you'll need it, as you can see here. Next of all, we've got odd and even because who wants a straight wall? Well, you might want a straight wall, but you might also want to have it on 0.5, which is halfway between each one, just like a standard wall. Let's now bring down this gap just a tad like so, just to make it not so much cement, a little bit more realistic, like so. The other thing is you'll notice is on all of the parts, you'll have a shade smooth option. So if that's on the cement, it will shade it smooth or on the bricks, which will be important as we actually go through this. So I'm gonna miss out my cement at the moment. And what I'm gonna discuss is the bricks first of all. Now you will notice at the moment, we actually have a resolution here, and this is so you can actually turn this up and then turn up your bevel a little bit and you'll notice that the actual bricks start to actually bend in and actually get beveled, which means that you can have some beautiful round bricks or rounded off bricks, which look a lot more nice than the actual square blocks that we had before. And you can play around this with to your heart's content. The next thing we've got is the height, and this is obviously the height of the actual bricks. So let's make them a little bit thinner. And the final one on the bricks is the width, so we can actually bring them in and make them pretty small, like so. What's more, we've also put a width randomness, randomness as well, so it means that we can actually bring them in. And you'll notice the best thing about this, when we bring them in, the actual width stays exactly the same. So the gap between the bricks stays the same, they don't cross over or anything like that, and that is exactly what everyone's looking for. Next of all then, we've got noise and displacement. And if we come down and set the displacement to 0.1, and what we'll do is we'll set the noise to something like two, and you'll see now that you've got a lot of versatility in how you can actually make these bricks look. If you want them highly stylized, um, you know, you can turn up the resolution, you can turn down the beveling, you've got a lot of control over how these bricks actually look. If we put this down something like one, you'll see now they're pretty wobbly and they look really, really nice. All right, so next of all, we've got rotation random. So if I spin this around, if I pull this out just a little bit, you'll see that it actually rotates some of the bricks on an actual random um, axis. 
So if I put this to 0.05, something like that, you'll see now that some of them are actually rotated. All right, the next one then is the rotation on the actual Z axis, which is rotating them this way. So spinning around this way. And the other one, which is one of my favorites, is this pull out. Because at the moment, they're pretty flat. So what we want to do is we want to be able to pull them out. So if I put this on 0.2, you'll see now that a lot of the bricks actually get pulled out in a random direction. And you can see just, this is actually would work for castles and things like that. There's so many things this would actually work for. It's so versatile. It can be used in many, many of your projects from hyper realism all the way to really um, stylized things. Next of all, we've got the actual brick gap. And the brick gap is just this gap here. If I put this on zero, you'll see that they're all actually touching now. So let's put it on 0 0.2, something like that. Not 0 0.2, 0 0.02, like so. And now you can see we've got control of bringing these in. And we've also got a brick gap randomness. So if I put this on 0 0.3, you can see now that it randomizes that cement from behind them. Now, once I put this on 0 0.02 or something like that, now I can actually discuss the actual cement. So you can see here, we've got actual cement in here. You don't actually have to have the cement on. You can actually hide it out the way like so if you want to, or you can actually have it on. Let's put it on for now and let's show you where it does. So first of all, we can change the thickness of it. Let's bring it out a little bit. So let's bring it not out that far. Let's put it on 0 0.03, something like that. And there we go. Now you can see we've got that in there. And the next thing we can do is the padding. So we've made it because you might want, um, I don't know, some relief on the top of this uh, wall or on the bottom of it. So you want we want to give you the option to change the padding. So if I bring the padding up, you'll see that we can actually bring it up higher than what the actual brick wall is. So you can see now it's actually higher than there. I'm gonna set my pad into um, zero because I'm not gonna need it on. And then what I'm going to do now is use the subdivision surface. So I can turn this up a couple of times. And then what I'm able to do is also come in and change the noise on the actual cement. So if I put this on something like two, let that do its magic. And remember, it's a lot of subdivisions along here. And let's put the uh, displacement on something like uh, 0.5. Let that do its magic. And there you go. Now you can actually see that we've got actual cement coming through our actual wall. Obviously, this is probably a little bit high. So let's put this on 0.5. Bring it back down a little bit. It's a bit too much uh, noise. In fact, 1.5 we'll put it on. And we'll put the displacement um, probably up uh, down to 0.1. Let's try that. And there we go. Now you can see just a little bit of cement coming through in various uh, places. And you can see how quickly it is to actually make a brick wall. Now, the other thing about this brick wall is it gets better than that because what you can also do is you can press Shift A and bring in a circle, bring out your circle. And then all you're going to do now is just press uh, Control A to resell the transforms, right click the origins geometry, and then we can add in a geometry node and bring in our wall. And there we go. Now, as we scale this out, so if we scale this out, you'll notice our brick wall gets uh, bigger like that. If you press tab, so you're in object mode, you can scale it out and keep the same size as the bricks. And the other thing is you can also come in and pull these out on the fly so you can actually have a brick wall however you want it. If you want your brick wall to look like this one, all you need to do is just click on, let's say this one, press Control L, and we're going to copy modifiers like so. And then you're just going to get a copy of the wall that's over here. Now, the only thing about this brick wall, the downside of it is that because the way we did it with curves is you can't actually get um, sharp edges. So be warned, if you want sharp edges, this uh, actual wall isn't made for that. It's made for actual curved walls and things like that. So castles, some buildings, the way that you can actually get around that if you really need to is put some actual columns in the edges and then you can actually uh, carry on with your wall. Because you are able to actually make a flat wall. If we just press uh, Shift A, path, pull this out and you can see. So you can see now if I link you up with the geometry node over here. So Control L, copy. And then what we'll do is we'll just reset transformations like so. And then you can see now we've got a nice, straight, beautiful wall. All right, everyone. So that brings us to the end of this geometry node. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you're going to have a lot of fun with it.
we have i think so far around nine or ten different geometry nodes we are in um, aiming for a hundred geometry nodes by the end of the year and we're also starting to actually put them on into bundles on our gum road so check those out if you want to actually make some savings all right everyone don't forget to like and subscribe and i'll see you on the next one happy modeling everyone cheers